Hey guys, so today's game of the day is Yakovenko vs Dubov from round 10 of the Russian Championship Super Final. So heading into this round, Yakovenko and Dmitry Andrekin both had the lead with 5.5 out of 9 points. And in this game, Yakovenko had white and Dubov had black. So the game opens with d4, we have knight to f6, c4 and Dubov goes for the Benoni defense, c5. D5 from Yakovenko, and here E6 challenging Black's, sorry, challenging White's center, and as White you don't want to capture on E6 because that would allow Black to have more pawns in the center. You also wouldn't want to push forward with D6 because, well, normally uh, advanced pawns uh, tend to be a weakness, and in this position, black can take advantage of this immediately with knight to e4. And if you defend the pawn with bishop to f4, here's simply queen to a5 check. And after knight blocks, this knight is immune for now because knight on d2 is pinned. Simply bishop captures on d6, and black is up a clear pawn for nothing. So after e6, knight to c3 from Yakovenko, we have pawn captures, pawn captures, d6, e4 strengthening the center, g6 preparing the bishop fianchetto, and here h3, stopping bishop to g4. We have bishop to g7, knight to f3, a6 preparing b5, an expansion on the queen side, and this is quite a common idea in the Benoni for black. a5 restricting b5, knight b to d7, bishop to g3, and here knight to h5 from Dubov which seems like a strange move in this position because the knight really can't jump into f4 it, it is guarded by the bishop uh, at the moment and probably the idea for Dubov is to play knight to e5 so after knight comes into e5 if white were to capture then the bishop can capture back and occupy the central square so we have bishop to e2 from Yakovenko so uh, if this knight were to move, white would be able to capture on h5 and ruin black's pawn structure. Knight to e5, knight captures, bishop captures, and here bishop captures on h5. G takes and queen takes h5. So Dubov willingly goes into this line uh, down a pawn, but he does have the bishop pair. We have queen to f6, putting pressure on c3. White goes queen to f3, offering a trade of queens and also at the same time defending this knight. Queen captures, pawn captures, and here f5 from Dubov, uh, trying to get rid of his weak isolated pawn and also at the same time challenging white's strong center. Knight to d1, so this knight here guards, guards b2 and this, this bishop is free to move. And also, uh, white might have plans of rerouting the knight to c4. Rook to f8. So uh, after this pawn is traded, black would have some pressure along the f file. Bishop to h6, rook to g8, and here bishop back to d2. So why did uh, Yakovenko retreat his bishop? Because the threat here is to play f4. If white were to play a move, let's say a nonsense move like rook to a3, here simply f4 and the bishop is trapped on h6, the next move for black would be rook to g6. So that is why he retreated the bishop and here f4 from Dubov. So stopping knight to e3, uh, the knight to e3, knight to c4 maneuver. We have bishop to c3 offering a trade, bishop to d7, bishop takes e5, Pawn takes e5, b3 uh, preparing knight to b2, and maybe to d3 or to c4. We have king to e7, knight to b2, b5, king to d2, and here rook to g2, trying to get active. White plays knight to d3, defending f2, and what happens if you play c4 in this position? Simply pawn captures, and after pawn captures, knight takes on e5, rook takes f3, king to c3, and, and uh, white is doing very well in this position because of his protected 
past pawns. And also you can see that black's, black's pawns are all isolated and quite weak. So after knight to d3, we have king to d6 from Dubov defending uh, c5 and e5. We have rook a to g1, rook a to g, rook a to g8, doubling on foul. Rook captures, rook captures, and here rook to c1. So going after c5. Pawn captures, pawn captures, and here bishop takes a5. Rook captures on c5. And here Dubov could have played rook takes f2. And if knight takes f2, that leaves the rook unguarded. So simply king takes e5. And this should be an equal ending for both sides. Well, both sides have passed pawns, and black does have the outside pass pawn, which should be uh, favored in most cases, but in this position, he does have a weakness on e5. So he has to watch out for knight to d3, and with perfect play, this should be a draw for both sides. But Dubov doesn't go for this, and he plays bishop to d7, which is also fine. Rook to c1 from Yakovenko, so stopping any rook captures on f2. We have rook to h2 and here h4. So uh, tempting Dubov to capture on h4. So if rook takes h4, this pawn is no longer under fire. And that allows knight to b2 from, uh, from white, so with the threat of knight to c4. Uh, but Dubov doesn't capture the pawn. And instead, after h4, place rook to g2, rook to c2, rook to h2, and here rook back to c1, uh, a bit of uh, move repetition, and here rook to g2 to stop any rook to g1, which would limit black's, uh, the activity of black's rook. We have rook to c2, rook to h2, <coughs> king to c3, so getting the king over to cover that pawn, Bishop to b5, knight to b, uh, knight to b2, and here Dubov captures the pawn because this bishop now guards c4 from the knight. We have knight to c4 check anyway. Bishop takes, king takes, and here in this position, rook to h3 from Dubov, which is an inaccuracy from Dubov that allows white to get the advantage. Instead of rook to h3, the best try would be rook to h1, and black should be able to draw this position. If rook to a2 going after a6, you simply throw an a5 first, so that the rook won't capture the pawn with check, and after rook takes a5 here, you push your pawn h5. Rook to a6 check, king to d7, and here, not rook to e6 going after this pawn, because after h4, rook takes e5, here white is in trouble after h3, rook to h5, h2, and there just simply isn't a way for white to avoid a rook check followed by promoting the pawn. So rook to h6 here instead of rook to e6, and after h4, white plays d6 with the idea of uh, going king to d5 and king captures on e5. But here is simply rook to a1, and if you play king to d5, simply the rook gives a check and the king has to come back and rook to a1, this should be a draw. And if here rook captures on h4, simply king captures and this is also drawn because although white does have an extra pawn, but this pawn doesn't account for much because it is doubled. So after rook to h3, white plays rook to a2, we have rook takes f3, rook takes a6 check, king to d7, and here black doesn't have the same idea of pushing his pawns and giving a check because this rook is on f3, and it also can't really check the white king at the moment. We have rook to a7 check, king to d6, Rook to a6 check, so a bit of a repetition, but here rook to e6 from white going after e5. Rook takes f2, rook takes e5, and now white has connected pass pawns. Well, black does have pass pawns on of his own, but the pass pawn on h7 is still very far away from the queen's the queen square, and also this pawn on f4 can always be uh, dealt with with rook to f5. 
rook to a2 trying to give a check on uh, the a file rook to f5 we have a check king drops to d3 rook to a3 king to d4 and here f3 e5 so white is trying to get his pawns going rook to a4 check king comes to c5 another check king to c4 but black runs out of checks so he drops back to a3 rook to f7 king to e8 e6 protecting this rook and also this pawn is getting very close to queening after rook to e3 king to c5 and in this position daniel duboff resigned the game Yakovenko is going to get his king to d6 and this is just all, all over for black. If something like h5, simply king d6. And if h4, you go rook to h7, threatening a checkmate on the back rank. So king to f8, simply capture this pawn. And well, uh, white is simply going to play king to d7, followed by just simply pushing his pawns. And also if f2 simply rook to f4 check and you mop up the pawn so very nice endgame technique from Yakovenko and after this game he is the sole leader of the tournament with six and a half points out of ten half a point a hit uh, of Dmitry Andrekin and also Vladimir, Vladimir Fedosev who managed to win a game so uh, there is one round left in this tournament. A draw would guarantee Yakovenko at least tied first. But let's see what happens tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do, please subscribe for more future content. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.